Take Tom Snyder, please. He's strong. He's powerful. He's Tom Snyder. He's on Eyewitness News, starting Tuesday at 11. Watch him. Richard Simmons, tomorrow morning at 9. Here's a uh, third offer on that Canadian MAZ Corporation. It looks pretty good, but if you're still looking to unload it, Sky. I've changed my mind about this company, Spencer. After looking at the profit sheets, they're way up over last year. I think I'll hang on to it. Send them a letter of refusal, a polite one, of course. All right. Is there anything further on the Monticello news? No, Scarborough's still being damnably stubborn about it. He's got to want something besides money, that is. I don't suppose there's anything, shall we say, shadowy about his past that might be persuasive? No, I'm afraid not. If you'll remember that report I gave you, except for a few youthful transgressions, everything about his background is spotless. Yeah, I had a drink with Nancy Carr yesterday, hoping she could tell me something. I doubt Nancy Carr would tell you anything of that nature, even if she knew something that could be useful. Oh, but she did tell me something useful concerning WMON. Oh? It's only second-hand information, mind you, but it may be true nonetheless. WNON just may be on the block. And if I can't buy a newspaper, I may as well just buy an influential TV station. You'd certainly be reaching more people through a television than you would through uh, reader circulation. That yeah, might be more fun than a newspaper. The only thing is, Guy, the station is owned by an April Scott young woman who now lives in London with her husband. Well, that's just what I'm telling you, Spencer. April Scott, the rumor is, is trying to get rid of the station. In fact, she's the one who hired my aunt to run the place. Maybe Geraldine knows whether it's a rumor or a fact. Get her on the phone for me, please. Sure. <clears throat> Hello. Mr. Saxon, it's Spencer Horn. Oh, yes, Spencer. Mr. Whitney is on the phone. One moment, please. Aunt Geraldine, how are you, you wonderful woman? I'm fine, Skyler, and I can tell you are. Also, my dear nephew, I can tell you want something. What is it? Well, you're one step ahead of me. Yes, I do want something. I want you to join me for lunch today. For lunch? Oh, Skyler, how nice. What time? Mm, one o'clock. No, no, one o'clock is fine. At the Trianon. Oh, how lovely, dear. I'll be there. Bye-bye. Good morning, Raven. How did you know I was here? I can hear you panting. All right, then. Why didn't you tell Skylar Whitney that the two of us were supposed to go to lunch and that the three of us had to go together? My dear girl, you were just telling me the other day how much you despised my nephew. Well, I don't care how rotten he is, Geraldine. You might as well get it through your head that your nephew is going to be my next husband. Yes, well, no matter. Anything I might say in response to that statement uh, will fall on deaf ears, I have no doubt. Well, excuse me, dear. I must get dressed for lunch. And so must I. My dear, you will be hanging above the fireplace in the Whitney Mansion soon. Edge of Night is brought to you by Bounty, the quicker picker-upper, and by the comfortable diaper, Love's disposable diaper. Your baby's comfort begins with love's love. Hi. There's my little short stop. Real functious as ever. That's why Brian wears Love's. A baby this active needs a really comfortable diaper. Love's. Love's hourglass design is tapered to fit. It cradles him in comfort. Love snuggles up gently, no matter how hard he's kicking. All elastic diapers don't fit the same. Compare yours to Love's. Hold it up to the light. 
If the padding's wide, it has to bunch up between your baby's legs. Love's padding's curved to fit comfortably. Love. Love. Love's is so absorbent. It helps keep them dry night and day. Here you go, slugger. <laughs> You'll be the most adorable baby on the team. Your baby's comfort begins with love's. Love's. Ralph, why'd you buy these? They're cheaper than Bounty. You goof, Shorty. Uh, Bounty absorbs more so it can be a better buy. Prove it. Okay. Watch. A penny's worth of Bounty against a penny's worth of an average bargain brand. The cheaper brand just can't absorb as much. But even with that penny's worth of Bounty still absorbing. So I did goof. Bounty can be a better buy. Bounty's the best way I know to save dough. So, what else can you tell me about this April Scott, Spencer? I mean, besides the fact that she's Dr. Kavanaugh's sister. There you are. Got your homework all done, I see. Of course. Now, let's see. Uh, April Scott is Dr. Kavanaugh's half-sister, by the way. In 1978, she married Draper Scott, a trial lawyer who was once a junior partner in the law firm headed by Mike Carr. Mm, our present district attorney. Right. The Scotts now reside permanently in London's Belgrave Square with two children. Her mother was Margot Huntington, apparently a woman of enormous wealth who died about three years ago and left her entire estate to Mrs. Scott. The television station was only one of many assets bequeathed to her daughter. Others include uh, real estate, oil shares, thoroughbred racing stables, a manufacturing plant. A very rich young lady then. Yes, but obviously, Sky, this woman doesn't care about the income from WMON, but she does care about the station personnel. Hmm. That's the... why uh, any approach you might make regarding the station should reflect that same kind of concern for the staff. Tender, loving care, eh? Exactly. Actually, since you're so knowledgeable about all this, why don't you just accompany Aunt Geraldine and me to lunch with... Well, if you think I could be helpful, of course I'll come. Good. Anything else? No, I think that's it this morning. All right, uh, I think I'll get dressed. Gunther, I'll need the car about 12.30. Yes, sir, Mr. Whitney. Very neat, Spencer, very neat. What? The way you maneuvered your way into getting that invitation to lunch, you have certainly learned all the tricks, haven't you? Gunther, you do well to mind your own business. Now, why don't you just do your job and have the car out front within the hour so Mr. Whitney doesn't have to wait this time? Yes, your highness. Morning, Spencer. What's the matter with him? Uh, the man's got delusions of mediocrity. I was just ribbing him now, and uh, yeah, he's got absolutely no sense of humor. Well, I'm glad he's gone. Yeah, so am I. It gives me a chance to get my morning hug and kiss. Huh? It gives me a chance to ask you a question. Ah, all right. I'm all attention, sweet stuff. By any chance, do you know a young woman named Mitzi? Uh, Mitzi? Mm, no, nope. Uh, Never heard of anyone named Mitzi. Ever been to Sid's Tavern? Uh, well, let's see. Um, uh, not that I can remember. Why? I thought you might have been to Sid's and seen her there. Oh, honey. You know I never pay any attention to waitresses. You ought to know that. I didn't say she was a waitress. Well, you said... Do... Hey, Nora. Why should I look after Calico when I've got Silk at home? Well, you're not looking after me very much lately. You're acting like a stranger. Well, you got to give me a chance. Come on, Nora. We haven't seen each other in years. In a way, you're kind of like a stranger to me. you got to give it a little more time to get going again. We've been working together here for several weeks. Oh, that's right. Just like when we first met, you know, working in the same house. Hey, you know, lightning is going to strike again, baby. You just wait and see. Don't you make me wait too long. I wasted a lot of tears over you when I thought you were dead. Don't make me shed more of the mitzies of this world. Understand? Right. Freddie, I already sent the story to the composing room. Well, it's got to be floating around the building somewhere because the copy boy picked it up about 15 minutes ago. Liz, I tell you what, page him, hmm? Okay, right. I am sorry to interrupt such a busy morning, Mrs. Oh, Carr. Not at all, not at all. I finished my story for the next edition, so now's a good time to take a breather. Uh, come in, please. Would you sit down? Thank you. If I may, my credentials. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Foley, you are indeed with the government, as you said on the phone. Yes, well, I believe I mentioned the purpose of my visit. 
Yes, you're investigating the late Jefferson Brown. And the possibility that he committed espionage a couple of years ago. As a matter of fact, Mrs. Carr, it was your series of articles in the Monticello News about his impersonation that renewed our interest in the affairs of the elusive Mr. Brown. My goodness, what an awesome thought. Oh, believe me, we were very grateful to you. Otherwise, we'd still be stumbling around in the dark. I don't mind telling you, Mrs. Carr, that, well, this is a matter of the utmost urgency, involving, as it does, matters of national security, so you can see its importance to all of us. Oh, yes, uh, I understand. I'll be happy to help you in any way you suggest. Well, I believe you can. Obviously, your story has involved an intense investigation, and I was wondering if you had some notes. Well, we... I, first of all, uh, there are no secrets. I mean, I'm not bound by any promises, so if I'm able to help the government in any way, I, you could have my notes. Well... I didn't doubt for a minute that you'd be fully cooperative. Thank you. Okay. I uh, didn't need any other incentive, although there is one. Oh? What's that? Well, this investigation proves very helpful, possibly, to a friend. Hmm? Thank you. Uh, oh, you, you're talking about Detective Damien Tyler, aren't you? The son of Fowler Wilcox. Yes, as a matter of fact, I am. Uh, he, he's a, a friend of my husband's and mine. Yes, well, I have heard of uh, Mr. Tyler, and I certainly intend to interview him as well. Well, I know it would mean everything in the world to Damien to be able to clear his father's name once and for all. Yeah, I'm sure he has intense feelings about uh, Jefferson Brown. Oh, by the way, one other question. How well do you know the woman that Brown married, uh, Raven Alexander? Very well. I'll get those notes. If you were a dog, what dry dog food would you want to eat? One flavor, two flavors, three flavors, or the most variety you can get. Four flavor, come and get it. The only dry dog food with the flavors of beef, cheese, liver, and chicken in one bag. Come and get it, Riley. You wouldn't settle for less than four flavors. Why should he? Come and get it. Because if you were a dog, wouldn't you want four flavor variety too? <laughs> What's Cindy Williams' exclusive story? Laverne and Shirley Star reveals how she was dumped by studio bosses. Inquiring minds want to know. I want to know. Which new faces, exotic places, and primetime shockers will surprise you this fall? The National Enquirer full TV preview tells you what blockbuster movies are ticketed for your living room. What's extra special about the new TV specials? It's in the Enquirer. How will TV adventure and fantasy lure you this fall? Find out in the Enquirer. Over 100 features for people with inquiring minds. Like me. Okay, that's it. One minute. How many words you got? Let's see. Nine lines and ten words a line. I guess about 90 words. Uh, how many errors? Come on. Uh, not, not on this one. 90 words a minute. That's fantastic. <laughs> that's got to be a new world's record. No, no. The record's 140 no errors. All right, come on. Get another sheet. We'll do it all over. And it's come warm. On. I'm not a trained seal. Hey, listen. I got a terrific idea. You see, I take you down to Harry's Bar. We get a couple of guys. We set them up. We con them into this thing. They make a few bets. You pull out the typewriter. Bing, bang, boom. We collect all the money. Forget it, man. Forget it. I'm not going to be a performer for nobody. You're going to waste all this wonderful talent. They really taught you how to do this thing in a can? Sure. You know something? I'm glad my taxes are being used so good. I pay a lot of money in taxes. In fact, you're better than Poppy, my secretary. She does 30 words a minute, and she thinks it's terrific. She wants to troll Poppy. All of a sudden, hey, I did 30 words a minute. There's only one difference between you and Poppy. She's a lot better looking than you are, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, mean, I gotta agree with you on that one. All right, listen, you've been such a good boy, I got a terrific surprise. Yeah? You're gonna love it. Wait a minute, am I looking at trouble here? Hey, this is legal. It's all legit. I took care of everything. What are you kidding? I even got you a license. Oh, Mr. Lorma, thanks. Look, you're not going to regret this, I promise. Hey, listen, just one word of advice, huh? Be very, very careful with that piece, you got it? Got it. Okay. Hey, Joe, how you doing? Hi, Eddie. How's it going? It's going okay. Beat it, kid. I don't want you here. This time I'll wait for Mr. Lorma's orders. You take your orders for me, too. And who says so? This says so. <laughs> hey, hey, this kid's even faster with a piece than he is with a typewriter. Put that thing away or I'll make you eat it. I mean, what is it with you guys? Joe, I'm surprised that you're showing off pulling hard way here. What is this, the OK Corral? And I just got through telling you to watch out with that thing. Did I say that? All right, I'm sorry, Mr. Lorman. All right, come on, get out of here. Go ahead, take a walk. I'll talk to you later. Sit down, cool off, will you? Yeah. One of these days, Eddie, I'm telling will you, you one of these days. Down, don't let him get here. Yeah, what well, do you got this kid hanging around the office wasting your time for? According to what you told me last night on the phone, we got one big problem. Oh, we got problems. Okay, all right. But uh, we could find an easy solution to this thing. If we handle it right. What did Ronaldo tell you? 
He said this kid, Chad Sutherland, plans on bringing Chody Travis up to that uh, Eden Tricentennial at the Rolly Castle. Now, he says if she plays any uh, tricks, you know, tries to get cute, she can start to uh, rally around the flag, kind of a number, get all these people crazy and excited, and we got big trouble in Eden. She can do it, too, because they're going to have a TV satellite sending the whole thing back there. Mm. And if she does it, we got big problems here, too. Yeah, so how do we handle it? Well, Ronaldo. Uh, Ronaldo says hands off to Travis, girl, or you make her a national martyr. All right, let me tell you what we're going to do, all right? Now, we don't have to hurt the girl. We'll do exactly what Ronaldo says, all right? But we make sure that she doesn't get to that party under any condition. We make it impossible for her to get there. How? You, uh, you can't go to a party if you just had a bad accident. Can you? where good music and good food go together, we're at world-famous Arno's Restaurant. We are secretly replacing the fine coffee they usually serve with Folgers Crystals. Our dark, sparkling Folgers Crystals rich enough to top off a fabulous meal? Watch. It's uh, good, rich coffee. I like it. Delicious. I love good coffee like this after a meal. Absolutely delicious. I'd like Every to make it home. <laughs> Folgers Crystals. For kidding. I would definitely serve this in my home. Can I buy it at the store? Yes. Oh, well, I'm going to buy it. <laughs> this is what diners at New Orleans famous Arno's told us about Folgers Crystals. Coffee rich enough to be served in America's finest restaurants. <laughs> oh, she's so cute. Let me give her a squeeze. Ooh. That reminds me, Mr. Whipple, you've changed. Oh? You don't say, please don't squeeze the Charmin anymore. Well, I stopped it, because no one ever listened to me. <laughs> it wasn't all bad. That squeezing got you to try Charmin. The softness keeps you coming back for more. How soft is Charmin? Watch. Drop a fragile egg. But on Charmin, it won't break, because Charmin's so cushiony, so squeezably soft. And that's the whole idea behind Charmin. The squeezing gets you, the softness <laughs> keeps you. <laughs> obeyed my first impulse. And what impulse was that? Not to answer the door. Uh-huh. Look, if I'm uh, interrupting something, uh, excuse me. But I uh, thought it was time we had a serious chat uh, about Troy. <sighs> Calvin, that ploy is getting a little tired, isn't it? Dee Dee, it's no ploy. I mean, I am genuinely concerned about the guy, and not because he's your brother, either. I mean, I just think he's intelligent enough to contribute something to society besides trouble. He will do just fine. With a little luck. By the way, you didn't have to make this trip. I already know about your magnanimous gesture. I know that you persuaded the DA's office to reduce Troy's gun charge from a felony to a misdemeanor. Thanks. You're welcome. Anyway, it wasn't a uh, magnanimous gesture. I just thought if he got another chance, you know, it might help. I just uh, hope it does. I already said thanks. Mm. By the way, you're welcome. Mm. Now, there is the problem of that uh, fine, but um, eh, I'm sure his new boss, Eddie Lorimer, wouldn't mind dropping a few bucks on his new uh, strong arm man. He is not a strong arm man. Oh. Well, tell me, exactly what does he do for Eddie Lorimer? You know, I've been thinking about that a lot. He is a security guard for the art gallery, okay? Uh, there is nothing wrong or illegal in that, is there? No, not in the least. There happens to be a great deal both wrong and illegal about Eddie Lorimer, however. Calvin, I think you'd better leave. Oh, come on, Dee Dee. Look, can't we just have a, a simple conversation? I didn't come all the way over here to fight with you. Well, this is a pretty good imitation. Dee, the fact is, I've decided that we have to renew our relationship, you know, get things 
back on the track like they were before they went all haywire. And I think with a little cooperation from us both, it's possible. <clears throat> you were going to say with a little cooperation from me, weren't you? Calvin, how many times do I have to tell you that there is nothing that you can do or say that can renew anything now between us? Now you listen to me, Dee Dee Bannister. Somewhere, there is a way to make you as crazy about me as you used to be, and I am determined to find it. Troy. I thought I heard two voices in here. Come in and try to be polite, will you? All right, sis, and ain't always. And this policeman isn't bugging you, is he? Because if he is, he's going to answer to me. Because you see, um, I'm armed, you know? <laughs> and allow me to um, show you the permit. Now, we must observe legalities, mustn't we? <laughs> I think I'll be going. But I can't be happy till I make you happy too. Now that you have oiled the machinery by stroking my ego and plying me with liquor, what can I do for you? I never could put anything over on you, could I, Auntie? It's a good thing you learned that lesson early, dear. Anyway, here's to whatever it is. <clears throat> uh, the heart of the matter is, I've just heard recently that April Scott is thinking of selling her TV station. <laughs> oh, so that's what this is all about. You're thinking of buying it. When did you hear it might be for sale? Oh, that doesn't matter. What matters is how you feel about all this. After all, you are the heart and soul of that place. Oh, that's nonsense. That's not what I've heard. No, no, Scotter. I'm merely the manager, sort of a glorified troubleshooter. Actually, it's the technical crew and the programming staff who are doing the work. If I may say so, Mrs. Saxon, I think you're being overly modest. I've done some checking on the business affairs of WMON and, of course, the ratings for Mr. Whitney. You know better than I, but business is very good, and there's no question that you are largely responsible. Thank you, Spencer. It's nice to be acknowledged. As a matter of fact, as Mr. Whitney's business manager, if he did purchase the station, I would definitely recommend that she be kept in her position as long as you are willing, of course. Well, I wouldn't have it any other way. Well, it's all very flattering, I'm sure. But I'm not altogether certain that April Scott is serious about her planning to sell. She merely has said she wished I would buy WMON simply to take it off her hands. Well, I have no doubt that you could afford it, Auntie, but then you probably don't want to get that involved, do you? Probably not. But then if I were to buy it, it would stay in the Whitney family, wouldn't it? And then uh, I'm sure Mrs. Scott would approve of that, don't you? <laughs> sly, Skyler, sly. <laughs> but yes, I imagine she would consider giving you preference. <clears throat> uh, excuse me, please. Oh, of course. Uh, no, no. Down. Why are you doing that to me? Can I say hello to my aunt? I know why you were here. You knew damn well that she would be having lunch with Skylar. Now, I have something to say to you that is far more interesting than anything that you could say to each other. That's Jane Russell, starlet. Full figured then and full figured now. And today we gals know how to keep our full figures looking pretty. Under the smoothest fashions, try the Playtex 18-hour seamless bra. Not a seam showing to spoil the smooth look. And the unique fabric that stretches for real support, real comfort in the 18-hour bra makes 18-hour girdles control comfortably. Try Playtex 18-hour bras and girdles. Full figures never look better. I got my A's. I got my B's. We've got, got our E's. Got my C and D. I get Myadex because I want more for me. Compare the leading multivitamin mineral formulas. Myadex complete balanced vitamin formula with minerals, including zinc, has the highest potency of them all. I got my manganese, magnesium, my copper, and my zinc. Iron. I get Myadex because I want more for me. Myadex, if you want more. Love in the afternoon. On General Hospital. 
I saw Luke Spencer stab Dan Rooney. I don't believe that. Why would Luke kill Dan? Jackie's right. They were friends. Good friends. Then why did he run? General Hospital, weekdays. You're right about one thing, dear boy. I have no intention of taking April Scott's offer seriously. I don't want to burden my life with anything so unwieldy as a television station. The right decision, I'm sure. But if it's something you want to take on, then have at it by all means. Then please do me a favor and ask Mrs. Scott if she'd consider selling WMON to your favorite nephew. I hear she's terribly fond of you, and it would definitely smooth negotiations between... Now, Raven, please try to understand that we have absolutely no idea what your late husband hid away in that safe deposit box. No, but you've got a good hunch, don't you? No, not even that. Furthermore, we have no idea why he thought it was so important that he locked it away under two keys. But he did. Yes, he did. And considering the fact that he left millions in banks and stocks and bonds, real estate and various companies, we have to assume that what he hid was especially valuable. That's what I thought. Have you found the repository? Yes, we have, but there's only one thing. Uh, you see, it's not doing you any good because we have the key that you need. And vice versa? Exactly. It's a stalemate. Good. I love making your boss suffer. Raven, Mr. Whitney is hardly suffering. He has the Whitney fortune. You have nothing. But I'm willing to make a deal. I bet you are. You can have half the value of whatever we find in the box if you'll let us use your key. How do I know you're telling the truth? You have my promise. <sighs> All right. Where's your key? Where's yours? <sighs> I have it right here. Which means we could go to the bank right now. Let's go. You know what makes life hard for me? Soft Philadelphia brand cream cheese. Spread so smooth and tastes so creamy, it's hard to keep in stock. And my customers say, don't you have something else like it? But there's nothing else like it. Because Soft Philly is Philadelphia cream cheese, made in a way nobody else can copy. In fact, it's patented. It's hard to beat Soft Philadelphia brand cream cheese. So creamy, so smooth, because nothing else is made like it. Romance can take you many places but only so far. Beautiful as it is, it has limits. But desire starts where romance leaves off and bursts into something beyond. Something Silhouette Books now captures in a startling new series about love. Silhouette Desire. Beyond Romance, where the possibilities are limited only by your imagination. Silhouette Desire. Come on along tomorrow night when last year's hottest new show, Joni Loves Chachi, returns at 8, 7 Central and Mountain. Then, meet two occult investigators in a comedy special. They're scared silly right after the return of Joni Loves Chachi. Tomorrow. Tonight at 9, 8 Central and Mountain, ABC News brings you President Reagan's address to the nation. Tomorrow, Geraldo Rivera investigates allegations of deception by the Easter Seal Society.